In today's tutorial, I want to show you how I created this simple pencil graphic. Now, I made a tiny little mistake here that's going to get corrected in uh, the version that I'm going to show you, but it's really easy to create your own simple graphics in Designer. I'm not an artist, I can't draw that well, uh, and I particularly can't draw that well on the computer, but uh, creating something simple like this is actually pretty easy. Um, the nice thing about doing these sorts of vector graphics is, uh, first of all, you can scale them to any size you want, but also you can take a little bit of license. It doesn't have to be super realistic looking. So I did a search for yellow pencils, and you can see some of these you know, sort of look like a pencil. It just really has to give the impression of a pencil. It doesn't have to look exactly like a pencil. So let's go ahead and get started with this. So we're going to start just with some simple shapes. So the core of it, of course, is this yellow part here. So let's draw out a rectangle. And I'm going to put a stroke on it for now so we can see all of these things, but I'm not going to have a fill. So let's just change out the stroke and the fill. And I've just got a one point line width over here in the stroke um, because we're just gonna rough this out a little bit. So the next thing I wanna do is this metal part here. So I'm going to just actually select the same shape, Control C and Control V to copy and paste it. And then I'm just gonna move it over and shrink it up. So something like that. So now let's do the eraser. For that, we can actually just, actually I wanna do one more thing to this. Um, if we look at pencils, um, let's find a real one here. So this metal part is just slightly bigger than the eraser and the wooden part. So I'm going to just turn off my snapping here and we're just going to make this just a little tiny bit bigger and then turn snapping back on and move it up and down until the red line across the center shows me that it's centered. Now it's just a hair bigger than our first rectangle. So now let's get our first one and copy and paste that yet again. And we'll move it down here. This is gonna become our eraser. So I want it to be a squared end on one side and rounded on the other. So I'm going to switch the corners to rounded and then I want to unselect single radius up here. And so my top left corner, I'm going to switch that back to none and then on my bottom left corner, I'm going to switch that back to none. And now I can move this into place and I'm going to go back and forth until my snapping tool tells me that it's centered. There we go. All right, so we've got those pieces already. So now we need the triangular piece. So let's make a triangle like that and we're going to flip it on its side by grabbing the handle here. And then I'm going to go over to my transform box. If you don't see this, you can go to view studio and look for transform and make sure that has a check mark. And we'll make this a perfect 90 degrees. And so now let's bring that up here and I'm going to zoom in control plus. And I want to line this up with the edges there. Back out of it a bit and I think we want to make this just a little longer and pointier. So something like that. Now I want to make the actual lead part so I'm going to copy and paste this and then we'll just bring this down, zoom in again, and we'll narrow it down and just kind of keep tweaking it until it lines up. In fact, this one I'm actually going to turn my fill back to black. Okay. 
And I'm just really kind of eyeballing it here. All right, that looks good. Okay, so there's a couple little extra details that we can add. So we're going to add a reflection here. So I'm going to grab the pen tool now and I'm going to make sure that the mode is set to line mode over here. And then about a third of the way up, I'm going to just draw a line. I am I clicked to create the first point. I'm holding shift and I'm going to click to create the second point. And let's go back to some of our references here. I don't have the exact re reference that I did initially. Oops. But you can see on some of these just depends how it's turned. You see a reflection kind of here across the top and then a little bit down and then there's a more shaded part. So we're just going to put one reflection line on there just to give a little bit of an indication. You could actually put another one in there to show more of that sort of hexagonal shape that a pencil actually has. But let's just keep this simple. We're going to put that line there and then I'm going to zoom in again. I'm still on the pen tool. Let's draw some little lines in here. I'm going to hold shift again to make sure it stays nice and straight. And once I've actually got the first one, I can switch to the move tool, copy and paste a set of these. And then I've got the second one selected. I'm going to hold shift and select the first one, copy and paste both of those and just move those over and zoom in a little more and just make sure that the ends meet. So let's select both of these holding shift again, make sure it meets. And then I'm also going to just move this over so that the area to the right and left on it is pretty equal. I could get fancy and use the alignment tools, but for this, I'm just going to eyeball it. All right, so we've almost got the core of this completed already. The one thing we're missing is these little pieces here. So that happens when you sharpen the pencil and they're not particularly regular. So we don't want them to be too perfect. So how we're going to create this is, is we're going to do some little cutouts. So I'm going to grab the triangle tool over here and draw a little triangle and let's put it on its side at 90 degrees. And the first thing I want to do is just grab the move tool, make sure that I've got about three across here. So I'm going to copy and paste. I'm just kind of trying to get a bit of a measurement. So I've got three and I'm just going to select all of them and adjust the width of them and then move them out of the way. Okay. So now we know we've got three triangles that is approximately uh, the correct width to fit all the way across here. And I'm just actually going to flip them horizontally over here so that they're facing inwards. So let's zoom in again. The next thing we need to do is we don't want them to be pointy. We want them to be uh, rounded. So I'm going to grab each of these triangles and up here when I click on it, it says convert to curves. I'm going to convert it to curves and then I'm going to go to the node tool and click on the point here and go up to this middle one, convert to smooth. And that's going to round off the edge. Back to the move tool, let's convert these other two triangles to curves. And then back to the node tool, we'll click on the pointy node, convert it to smooth. Click on this pointy node, convert it to, oops, click on it. It'll turn blue when it's selected and then we'll do that. So uh, the next thing I want to do is I just want to kind of mess these up just a little bit. So I'm going to shorten this one and I'm going to shorten this slightly, but not the same amount. So maybe we'll just make that even a little bit shorter. 
and I can also kind of mess with the width of some of these to make them a little bit different. You can also grab the node tool and just click anywhere and just kind of a, click on a spot and just pull it out a little bit. So we could do something like that. Now let's grab all of these and select them all and go up to this square with a plus and add them all together. So now they are a single shape. So the next thing I want to do is I want to copy and paste this shape and I'm just going to move that copy off to the side. We'll use that later. So now let's grab this triangle and we'll bring it down over here and line it up. So now I'm going to turn off the stroke here and I'm going to fill it black. And then I'm going to zoom in and make sure that I'm nicely lined up. I can see that my triangle maybe needs to be just a hair. Actually, I think what I need to do is I need to turn the stroke off of this one too, and then it should line up. And so now we can see there's a little gap, so we're going to use the arrow keys to just nudge it a little bit. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to zoom back out, and then we're going to select all of this and add it together. Okay, so we have this piece. Now we want to cut out this same shape from the orange part of the pencil. And so I'm going to use this little extra bit that we duplicated earlier in order to do that. So I'm going to select this rectangle. I'm just going to move it out of the way. And it looks like I must have accidentally copied and pasted a second one there. Let's get rid of that. So what I want to do is I want to get rid of the stroke on this. So I'm going to make that no stroke and then on the fill I'm going to switch that to black. And then I'm going to grab this one and put it right on top of it. And just for color difference let's just uh, make that white. So we will take off the stroke and we'll make the fill white just so we can see the difference. And we're going to place that on top. like that. I want to get rid of this black line here. So I'm just going to nudge it over just a little bit till it goes away and then select all of this and go up to the minus. The shape that you're cutting out needs to be on top in the layers of the one that you're cutting from. So this shape with the triangles was on top of the rectangle in the arrangement of the layers. I just wanted to point that out. Okay, so now we have this shape back. Let's start putting this all together and coloring it. So I'm going to select this shape. Let's change the fill. We've got some oranges that are pretty close here, so I'm going to start with that. And Actually, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty pencil-like to me, so I'm not even going to do anything more to that. Let's bring it back up here. and back and forth till I get that red line. That doesn't look right though, so we'll just nudge it down with the arrows. That looks pretty good. All right, and then this little reflection line, I'm just going to select it. You can grab it in the layers and just drag it up to the top. Kind of hold your mouse off to the left, kind of drag it to the left, otherwise it ends up nesting. And I think it just did, so let's undo that. I'm just going to label it so I know where it is in case I lose it again. Let's bring it to the top and just kind of pull to the left as you're dragging so that it doesn't kind of group and nest. So we got that on top now. Let's make our pink eraser here. I'm going to select that and I already um, picked the color here, but what I did was I just went into the colors 
and found uh, something that was kind of between pink and red because the erasers are kind of like a rosy pink and then adjusted the um, the saturation and stuff in this little color wheel thing here. So um, I'm also going to take the stroke off of that. So we'll click on the stroke. There's different ways you can work with color in designer if you're uh, wondering why I'm here or here. Um, anytime you're on a shape, you'll get these fill and stroke options, but you can also get those from the color um, tab and click on the fill or the stroke and you can also be in the swatches. So there's different ways to color. This piece here, this is the wooden piece. So let's put that in position. So I'll just bring that there and it looks like I need to nudge it over and down just a hair. In again a little. That looks pretty good. And so we will make that kind of a natural color. So uh, I selected that color the same way as um, I selected the pink or the orange. I just found a pretty close color and then just kind of played with uh, the saturation until it looked correct. Now here's my little lead piece and let's just label that too. And I'm going to move that on top of my little wooden piece. And then let's take a look at this silver bit. So let's select this square. And I'm going to turn the stroke off of that. And for this, uh, you could do a pattern fill if you have like a silvery texture, but there are some built in styles. So I'm going to click on that tab right now. Uh, if you don't see that, you can go to View Studio, make sure Styles is selected. And so uh, in this one up here, I did the aluminum one, but let's go with the metal this time. Now you see that creates a weird kind of 3D look. So over in the next tab, I'm gonna go to effects. And again, if you don't see it, just go to view studio. And let's get rid of all the 3D stuff. So the bevel emboss and the 3D, and I don't want an outline. So inner shadow, let's see what that does. I can take that off too. Actually, I like it on, let's leave it on. And then inner glow, I could take that off or on. It doesn't make too much of a difference. So let's just leave that on. And you can mess with some of these settings, see what they, what they affect. So I don't want any radius on that. So I could take the radius down a bit. Let's just go with that. That's close enough. So you can continue to play with that, but let's just fix now that we've turned the stroke off. Our lines are too long, so let's click each of them while holding shift to grab all of them and then we can adjust those. All right. So the last thing I want to do is I want to create this reflection here. So when we look at our sources, you can see that there's kind of a, it's a hexagonal shape really. And so where the light catches it, it kind of makes this little reflection. So that's what we're going to replicate here with this line. So we're going to select that. We'll shorten it up a bit so that it matches the end here. And it doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to have this glow around it. So it's going to extend a little bit past the edges of these end points. Um, so for this, we are also going to stay in the effects, um, effects, and we will go with an outer glow. And I'm just going to turn up the pixels and just eyeball it to where I like it. Um, I also want to change the color of this, and I'm just going to actually use that same color we used for the wood here. And then I'm also going to turn the opacity of the fill here in the effects down to about 50% and that will just lighten the actual line itself so that we end up with more glow 
and less. Um, so actually we don't want the fill to be that color, we want the stroke to be that color. And so that gives us mostly the glow and not as much of the line. And so then we can also just shorten this if we want and zoom back out. And now we have our pencil. So even though we didn't have to draw hardly a thing, we were able to work with shapes and just kind of get an approximation of what a pencil looks like. And I don't think anybody would not think that this is a pencil. Actually, let's make this, I'm getting picky here, but let's make this eraser a little shorter. That looks better. So, you know, go ahead and play around with things. Get a reference photo and try and figure out what kind of shapes you can use to build that object.